Good morning, Saints. It's good to see you. Give everybody a couple of minutes here to log in. I got some music playing. This comes off of uh, In Search of the Lord's Way website. You can go there yourself. SearchTV.org. They got a whole bunch of music you can listen to. I hope you enjoyed Bill's lesson. Hopefully, maybe, maybe, fingers crossed. Uh, next week, when we go back to worshiping at the building, maybe we can dialogue with Bill and Mike about broadcasting the classes. It'll make some changes, but uh, we'll see if we can do that. It's in the works. It's in the works. All right. Good morning, Saints. It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, uh, where's my announcements? First off, right? I'm Scott Busich. I preach for the Escoda Church of Christ. This is my cell phone, 989-305-2721. You're welcome to call me, text me. Uh, if you're watching via Facebook, you can always send me a message through Facebook. If you got any questions or comments, or if you need uh, need someone to talk to, right? I want to remind you, don't panic. Uh, and in fact, I've got some statistics this morning I want to share with you. Maybe that'll help. But don't panic. Uh, we the there have been diseases, there have been pandemics before. Uh, humanity has continued. Uh, there was even a worldwide flood and everybody died except for eight people, right? Uh, the bigger question, the better question, of course, is are we loving God as much as he loves us? That's a tough question to answer on an individual basis. You gotta make that choice, right? But here's a couple numbers if you're struggling uh, we want to make sure people stay safe, stay alive, right? So uh, these are some federal phone numbers you can call. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. People, people are struggling, and that's okay. It's, it, people are struggling with being home, being alone, not being able to socialize, not being able to go out. That's, that's okay. If you're having uh, problems uh, mentally and all that, you want some help, reach out. This is a federal number, 24 hours, licensed counselors, they're here to help you. We are here to help. We want you to not just stay alive, we want you to stay safe too. So if you're a veteran, there's an 800 number for you as well, 855-948-2311. You can call that number 24-7 for if you're a veteran. Uh, again, if you're, if you're a veteran, but if you're needing help uh, financially, uh, mentally, if you're struggling, this is a good number. If, if you're struggling with uh, any sort of issues and you're a veteran, give this phone number a call, okay? And then uh, uh, this, again, is another federal number. If you're struggling financially or whatnot, I'm not saying they're going to give you money, but I am saying that they're here to help you, and they've got counselors, guidance counselors, and uh, you can reach out to them. Again, it's a, another federal number, 800-985-5990. Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, last one is this is for Michigan only. This is only for Michigan, and this is for texting. Uh, text restore to 741741 if you need help financially. This and, and uh, guidance, counseling, any of those things, you can text uh, restore to 741741, and, and they will help you. This is for Michigan only. This is not for the rest of the U.S. This is for Michigan only. All right, uh, just in case you missed it, you can always call me, uh, but I sleep and, and do other things. So if I don't answer, leave me a message, or you can text me, 989-305-2721. Uh, two, three, three more sheets of announcements, okay? Here we go. So first of all, uh, I got this off of the federal, this is a federal website, but it's for Michigan, okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see this page, but they've got estimations. And then they've got cons confirmed infections, and then they've got tests and projected tests. The blue line, that's testing, all right? Estimated infections, if you see the dotted lines, that's estimated infections. Notice how high those are, and notice how they go down. 
But the actual confirmed infections, see how low they are and see how they're also going down. Those numbers are going down every day as, as time passes. Um, the other one that I wanted you to see is this one. Again, this comes off of the same website. But uh, if you look, you, there's, a, there's a solid green line there. And uh, um, that solid green line is uh, an unchanging number because that's the number of, uh, of ICU beds that are available. And if you notice, at a certain point, uh, the projected numbers exceeded the available amount of beds. Uh, but that number's gone back down. And again, that was projected here in Michigan, aside from the Detroit area, we never actually have gotten to the point where our ICU beds have all been full. And so we are in good shape. We're in good condition right here in Michigan right now. Now, uh, you know, of course, <laughs> everything's subject to change. So that doesn't mean we can run out and be crazy, but it does mean that, that you know, the disease is subsiding. We're, we're, uh, what we're doing is working, and it's all well and good. Um, and and with that, of course, I'm looking forward to the 24th. That's next Sunday. That's that's one week. That's seven days. Okay. Yeah, seven days. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try worship together. Uh, Bill's gonna do Bible study at 10 a.m. Worship's at 11, like right now. Right. 6 p.m. is a, a secondary worship. If you can't make the first one, um, if you're not comfortable coming. Feel free to stay home, okay? Uh, if if you're if you are of the high risk category, uh, if you're sick, definitely stay home. <laughs> but if you're the high risk category and you don't want to, watch, no, no, we're not judging anybody concerning this issue. We'll judge you concerning other things, but concerning this issue, staying home, staying safe, and I'll talk about that as I get into my lesson. That's called being wise, okay? Uh, I, I, well, I'll talk about that as I get into my lesson. But uh, let me let me say this. If you, maybe your family, you're used to coming just to worship at 11 o'clock. You don't come for Bible study normally. Uh, as we get back into this, let me challenge you to give a little extra time. Come for Bill's uh, class Bible study at 10 a.m. instead of just coming for worship at 11. Or maybe you only come for morning Bible study and worship. Let me challenge you to come for the 6 p.m. worship as well. Every single lesson is, is different. Every single class is different. It's not like, well, I heard the worship service at 11, so, you know, I'm just going to hear the same thing at 6. No, no, no. That's not, that's, not how, that's not how I as the preacher operate. That's not how we as the church operate. So let me encourage you to step it up a little bit. Give a little bit more of your time as we move back into this, uh, as we move back into meeting together physically in our worship services. Um, I think... I think that's it. Wait, nope. I got two two other announcements. I didn't make papers for that. First of all, the 25th is Memorial Day. Normally, we have a picnic for Memorial Day with the church. We're not going to be doing that, okay? <laughs> so, uh, come for the 24th. Uh, as Bill said, bring your masks. We're going to have uh, individual uh, uh, communion cups uh, already pre-made, so they're going to be yours. Uh, you know, if you're wearing your mask, you're going to have to practice untying opening masks to partake the Lord's Supper. But we're making our provisions as best we can in, for the 24th. But we won't be having our picnic on the 25th that we normally do. The other thing is Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, Willie, little Willie, the, you know, the, the little boy who has the, the older twin sisters and all of that, he's turning seven. On Wednesday and uh, I put a notification on uh, Facebook an event where they want to do a drive-by birthday party for him again uh, like we did with Nathan that turned out very well if you need Willie's address go ahead and contact me send me a message and we'll get you Willie's address uh, and let you know uh, where that is and we can uh, celebrate Willie's birthday while he's going through this uh, COVID virus um, I just checked the statistics for the web uh, off the website as far as infections for Iosco County. It's kind of been a little fluctuating, and I think that's because they're changing how reporting is going. If you recall, several weeks ago, it was at 57. Last couple of day, uh, times we've met, it's been 55. How it goes down, I don't know, but it's going back up. It's at 58 today, and so it may just be how they report things. 
Um, the deaths have stayed at eight. So we're at 58 and eight hasn't really gone up hasn't really gone they don't tell me when people are well on this website so i would assume that since it's been several weeks most of those people are recovered as bill pointed out this disease is very scary very bad uh, it is hard to breathe and it it takes a toll on people's health we don't want you to get ill we don't want you to catch this disease so uh, if you're susceptible if you're in that category make sure you stay home um, and, and practice uh, keeping yourself safe in that regard. All right, I think those are all my notes. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. In case, uh, in case you didn't know, Dan, who has, he's got feet problems, uh, and uh, he's in the hospital up in Alpena. He has uh, gotten an infection in his leg, and I haven't gotten a chance to talk to him to see how bad it is, but he's in the hospital in Alpena. They don't allow visitors. Um, but he's got an infection in his leg from his foot wounds, and so we need to be praying for Dan um, while he's in the hospital up there in Alpena. So I think those are all of my announcements. Let's have a word of prayer, and we can get into the scriptures, shall we? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for blessing us with this day. We thank you for today. We thank you so much for the blessings you've given to us. This morning, Father, we've gathered together to worship to offer you praise, to honor your name, to lift you up and extol you as God, as our God and as the God of this universe that you've created. We've come together to honor you, to extol you, to edify each other, to build each other up. And Father, we pray that uh, as, as we study your scriptures, that we will be challenged to be better Christians, to be more like you, to be more like your son even as we trust in you for our forgiveness of sins. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the gift of eternal life that comes through him. We give you all the praise in his precious name. Amen. All right, so uh, we're going to be we're going to be in Luke chapter 14 uh, because I want to talk about being contagious Christians. If, if, if anything's on our mind right now, it's being contagious, right? And, and most people don't want to be contagious, but as Christians, hopefully, we want to be contagious Christians in this regard. We want more people to be Christians. And, and it's, it's, it's about saving souls. It's about being, bringing people from a condition of being lost to being saved, from being condemned to hell to eternal life. We want to change people's position from death to life. Our world right now is focused in on all of the doctors and nurses that are busy saving lives. And that's good. They should. But that's really just a temporary measure because eternal life is far more than physical life here on earth. And so uh, how can we, how can you and I during this time, how can we become better Christians and, and being contagious Christians, contagious in this way? When we are Christians, what we want to be able to do is have people say, I want to be around Scott. I want to be with Scott because he's a good guy, because he is an upright person. I've been uh, watching uh, some videos put out by a gentleman who's a jewel thief, and it's kind of interesting because he's he'll he'll talk about his experience in jail, and uh, which was a terrible, a terrible, terrible thing. He's got some terrible stories. Uh, but one of the things he'll say is he'll talk about like some of his cellmates and he'll say, this guy was, uh, he, he could beat you to a pulp, but he was a good guy. He was a stand-up guy. I'm like, man, that's, that sounds really, really uh, distorted and twisted. But what, we, what he's talking about is that this is, this is a man who, if he was your friend, he was there to support and encourage you and you had, you had no problem being with that guy. Now, if he was your enemy, that was something entirely different. That you do not want to be this guy's enemy. Now, we as Christians, uh, look at chapter, I know I said 14. Look at chapter 15 and verse 1 and see how contagious Jesus is. Chapter 15 and verse 1. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. Now, that him we know is Jesus. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. 
I, I don't know about you, but when I start to talk about Jesus, when I start to talk about God with so many people who are not Christians, often the response that I get is, well, I don't want to hear that. How can we change? Now, now we, we can't change other people, but we can change ourselves. And so, and, and I'm, I'm talking about myself here. How can we change? How can we change what we do, how we live, the things that we say? How can we change that so that when we speak about Christ, when we speak about God, the rest of the world says, I want to hear that. Now, now this is this is a difficult part because there's two groups here that Luke gives us in chapter 15, verse 1. The first group is the tax collectors and sinners. These are the people that they live terrible lifestyles. They live awful, ungodly lifestyles. There's a reason why they're called tax collectors and sinners. But the other group is the Pharisees and the scribes. These are the religious people. These are the religious elites. These are the, the godly people in their society. These are the ones that they got it going on. They know the right way to live. They know the good way to do things. And look at the difference between those two groups. The tax collectors and sinners, what are they doing when Jesus speaks? We want to hear him, right? Now, the Pharisees and the scribes, notice what they do. Verse 2, the Pharisees and the scribes, they grumbled. They grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Now, we have to be careful because we're not Jesus. We have to be careful. We have to be careful because we want contagious Christianity. We want to be able to, when we open our mouths and start talking about eternal life and salvation and all of that stuff, we want the tax collectors, the sinners, we want them to say what Scott has I want, right? Now, the Pharisees, the scribes, Jesus, he's going to chastise them, but Jesus is not. He wants to bring them to eternal life as well, but Jesus is not going to change his message. He's going to challenge the Pharisees over and over again. You read your Gospels, and you'll find that Jesus is going to challenge them. He's going to, he's going to call them to account for their righteousness, but when it comes to the tax collectors and sinners, Jesus doesn't excuse it. But when he speaks, they say, I want to hear. So having said all of that, the question is, why? Why does what Jesus say cause the sinners, the most ungodly people, why does it cause them to say, I want to hear Jesus? Let's back up to hear what Jesus has to say, and maybe we can find a few uh, lessons in there for us. So Luke chapter 14 and verse 1, one Sabbath when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully, and behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. We're living in the midst of a pandemic right now. And, and there are people that are afraid. There are people who are ill, fighting for their lives. And there are people that are dying. And, and there are people that are, that are giving everything to try to save others. So the doctors and nurses, they're putting their own life on the line so that other people's lives might be saved. There are people that are giving up um, their livelihoods so that people's lives can be saved. There are people that are giving up their savings so that people's lives might be saved. There are people that are, that are changing jobs so that people's lives are being saved. Now, I, I say all of that because sometimes as Christians... We want to say, man, we got to make sure we're worshiping God. And we should, to a degree. See, these guys, they gathered for worship. And, and there's rules for worship. There are things that you do and there's things that you don't do. 
And, and for the Jewish mindsets, uh, for the Jewish law, I'm sorry, for the Jewish law, the law is on the Sabbath day you do no work, no work, period. And the Jews have had great arguments about what is law uh, work and what isn't law work. And they've made their own laws and restrictions as far as what is and what isn't work. And they had great discussions and fights about all of that. So here comes Jesus. And, and, and the Pharisees, they're watching him. Why? Because he's boring? No, they're watching him because they want to catch him. They want to trap him. They, they want him to make a mistake. They want him to do something wrong. And so Jesus comes in. There's a man there with dropsy. And, and notice Jesus isn't even really talking to that man. He's talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the scribes. He's talking to the religious leaders, the lawyers, verse 3. And he says, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? And their hearts are so hard, they know the right answer, and they know the wrong answer. And they're not going to give the wrong answer. The wrong answer is, well, no, of course not. We want him to keep his dropsy. That's the wrong answer. But their hearts are so hard. They, they know they can't say that because that's the wrong answer. But they can't give the right answer. What's the right answer? Of course we want people's lives to be saved. As Christians, as contagious Christians, are we encouraging people to life? Or are we encouraging people to death? Oh, well, we should be, we should be worshiping God. And, and that's true, we should be worshiping God. But if I'm out there condemning people for not gathering to worship in the midst of this pandemic, while well, people are trying to save their lives, stay safe, and I'm busy condemning them, oh, you didn't come to worship, what kind of a message am I giving? Because it contradicts what Jesus teaches here, doesn't it? We as Christians, we want to be contagious Christians. We want to be like Jesus. And Jesus gives us here this teaching, and that is life. God didn't create us for to worship him. Go back to the Garden of Eden. God created us for works. He put Adam and Eve in the garden so that they could work the garden, so they could do good works. And, and, and throughout Christianity, you find the teaching, we are here to do good works. If you want to show the love of God, what are you going to do? You're going to love your neighbor, love your brother and sister, love those who are in need, right? We should be worshiping. I'm not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is that life comes first. It's first priority. And if we are going to be contagious Christians, what should we be doing? Life takes priority first. I'm not saying don't worship, but life comes first. And, and so we need to be careful of that. We need to, as we, as we move into coming back to worship together, there are going to be people who are saying, I don't want to come to worship. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to catch the disease. Pfft. Those foolish people, they need to be at worship. Where are you at? Jesus calls us, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? He calls us to be this kind of people. All right, now, as he continues in verse 7, we're not done. Contagious, right? We want, to, we want people to catch what we've got. We want people to say, man, I want to be with those Christians in Oscoda. I want to, I want to fellowship with them. I want to worship with them. I want to hear what they have to say. I want to, I want to listen to their words because what they say is true. It's helpful and it comes from God. Look at what he says as it continues. Now, verse 7. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. 
Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now remember, contagious Christianity. Obviously, be humble, right? Okay, that's, that's quick and easy, right? Who's speaking this parable? We're, we're, we're talking about Jesus, the one through whom all things are created, the, the one through whom all, all of humanity will be saved by his blood, the one who's going to die on the cross, the one who sets aside his throne, as Paul tells us in Philippians. He sets aside his throne and he lives among us, being found in the form of a man. He is teaching us. You want to be like Jesus. You want people to listen to what you have to say. You want contagious Christianity. How humble are you? Now, now it, notice if if you're if somebody else wants to honor you. Notice if if the for the in this case you've got a wedding feast. If the host says, "Oh no, no, Scott, come on up. Let someone else honor you. Don't stop them." But you yourself choose that position of being lowly, of being the servant, just as our Lord and Master did. Contagious Christianity. When we are talking about things of God, when we're talking about things of Christ, when we're talking to those who are tax collectors and sinners, do we take the position of humility? Man, that's hard. That's hard because I know the scriptures. I know what God has to say. I, I know who Christ is. I know how a person is saved and not saved. I know these things. And they may not. And it's hard for me. Can I be humble as I bring the good news to those who need to hear it? most, and those who want to hear it, and those who are ready to hear it, the tax collectors and the sinners. Now, we're not done with chapter 14, but being humble, that's, whew, let me know when you get there, right? <laughs> Verse 12, Jesus isn't done talking about what draws the tax collectors and sinners. Verse 12, he also said to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brethren or your relatives, or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return, and you will be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. What's your point in holding feasts? Now, I'm poor enough that I don't hold feasts just to show off how wealthy I am. That's that's one of these situations. Usually the weddings, especially in their day and age, the weddings were, man, the 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 host showing off his wealth. And the and in those days, their weddings, you didn't bring gifts to a wedding feast. Instead, it was the host that was giving gifts out at the wedding feast, showing off how wealthy they are, showing off how, how good to do they are. And so when Jesus gives us this parable, uh, again, this is not a position that I find myself in very often, but when he gives us this parable, the, the point is very obvious, though. If you're only about your friends... If you're only about those who are going to return in kind, you're done. That's it. That's it. Now, can you imagine the number of times that Jesus held? And now he's not going to host, but the number of times Jesus held the wedding feast, the number of times where Jesus was in charge of the feasting that went on. The best one I can think of is the Passover the night before he was betrayed, when he told his disciples, this is my body. This is my blood. Jesus, again, creator of the universe, Jesus didn't invite just God to his feast. Who did he invite? The people that we wouldn't. Tax collectors, sinners, 
the poor. As, as contagious Christians, we need to make sure that it's not just, well, I invite just the people I like. I, I invite just the church. I invite just the saved people. I invite just those that, that I know. Man, and, and this is tough because I've had some unsavory characters in my house. And that's a little freaky. That's a little scary. We have to be careful about those things as well. But the reality is, is why do we feast? Is it to show off how wealthy we are? Or is it to reach and encourage other people? Hopefully that's the case. Hopefully that's that's why when when you have your your Thanksgiving dinner, when you have your your Christmas feast, when you when you do your Fourth of July cookout, your Memorial Day barbecue, and those things, it's not just family and friends. You can have those too. But it's about sharing with others. Not to show off your, your wealth and your opulence, it's to show them love. Are you loving them? Because that's going to be contagious Christianity. Now, and now again, all of this is, is predicated on the idea this is what you're doing. Now if somebody else rebuffs you and they turn their back on you and they say, uh, I don't want anything to do with that. Well, that's the next parable. Verse 15, let's keep reading. Uh, then one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, and he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, that, that's, that's, that's true, but what he's saying is very different from what Jesus understands him to be saying, and Jesus is going to challenge him on that, right? There are lots of people there at this wedding feast who think, they got it going on. They, they know God. They, they got this, this relationship with God. They're set. They're good. They're godly people. They're not sinners. They're not tax collectors. They're not the ugly people of the society. Look at what Jesus says in verse 16. A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But... They all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. Oh, so polite. <laughs> and another said, I bought five yoke of oxen. I have to go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry. And said to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, sir, what you have commanded has been done and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall taste of my banquet. Ooh. Blessed is everyone who eat bread. Now, I, I mean, think think about the situation. If if you bought a field, surely you want to go examine that field. If you bought some oxen, surely you want to go examine those oxen. And, and if you've just gotten married, well, you got some some business to attend to with the wife, or else she'll never let you forget your honeymoon. This situation. When Jesus talks about these things, what is he talking about? He's talking about these people think that they're okay because they're about their business. They're doing the things that they need to be doing. Whereas God has invited them to come to the feast and they say, No, I'm busy. Sorry, God. I got other things to do than to be with you. Ever hear that? I've heard that plenty. I've heard that often. And, and it hurts my feelings when I've gone through the, the process of setting out a banquet, setting out a feast, and, and inviting people. And those people that I've specifically invited say, no, sorry, Scott, I've got, I got other things to do. I got, I got better things to do than to be with you. What does Jesus say? Go into your room and mope, right? What does he say? He says, 
Forget them. Go and find somebody else. Forget these that, oh, I'm, I'm too busy. I got to check out my field. I don't have time to be with you, Scott. Scott, go find somebody else. Somebody who will come in and feast with you. And even if they're not the ones that you would have first chosen, because these are not first choice people, right? Look at what he says. I invite first choice people. They don't come. Contagious Christianity. They're not coming, Scott. What are you going to do? <laughs> go get the poor. Go get the crippled. Go get the blind, the lame. Go get the complete strangers. Go to the streets and say, and compel them. You need to come to this feast, man. It's, it is the feast. You need to be coming to this feast. I don't know who Scott is. That's okay. Come on in. Contagious Christianity. That's who we, that's who we need to be. Now, this is not excusing bad behavior. This is not excusing sinful behavior because Jesus will also, in other places, talk about repentance. He'll talk about how we need to set aside a lifestyle of sin. But right now, what he's talking about is we, if we are going to be talking to those who want to hear us, chapter 15, verse 1, tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to hear Jesus. Why were they doing that? When the, everybody else was too busy, Jesus said, let's go get the lame, the blind, the sick. Let's go get the complete strangers and bring them in because they're not too busy. You're going to make new friends. You're going to make better friends. All right. Now, uh, I've got enough time. I want to move into verse 25. Yes, I want to cover all of chapter 14. Contagious Christianity how does Jesus do it? Verse 25. Now, great crowds accompanied him. He's already given us some things that we need to do. He's already got crowds of people following him. Do you, not, not, as, not as your disciples, but do you have people that follow you because you're a disciple of Christ? Verse 25. Now, great crowds accompanied him and he turned and said to them, now he's going he's gonna to draw some lines here. He's invited everybody, but you can't just come as the sinner and stay the sinner. You have to become better than who you are. We as Christians, we want to bring sinners to God, sinners to Christ. But, but, the, but sinners need to change. They can't just stay the same. And so in verse 25, Jesus is going to, he's going to draw that line in the sand. And with God, the line does not change. Now, he's invited all sorts of unsavory characters. And now in verse 25, he says, now, if you're really going to follow me, though, this is what you must be like. Contagious Christianity. He's going to lose some followers here. But at the same time, because of what he says, because it's honest and true, he's going to keep most of them. Look at what he says in verse 25. Now, great crowds accompanied him. And he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Who comes first? Christ. Christ comes first over everybody else you know, including yourself. Now, that's hard because if, if you know anything about tax collectors, sinners, Pharisees, and scribes, we're all about me. I'm concerned about my life, about saving me. Jesus says, now that's important. But he says, I'm before that. I'm first. And, 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 as he continues in verse 27, he says, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Folks, a cross is for crucifixion. It's for dying. I die to me and I live to him. Die to self, live to Christ. Christ is gained. And as he continues, he says, verse 28, he gives us, he gives, we know, we understand this. When he starts talking about building a tower, a substitute house for tower, and it's more applicable to our day and age. But look at what he says in verse 28. He says, for which of you desiring to build a tower, make that a house, which of you desiring to build a house does not first sit down and count the cost, 
whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. You're just a fool. You start building this tower, this house, and, and you can't finish this thing. You started walking with Christ. And now you've turned away, you've turned aside. Think about, think about the stories of people who've become Christians. Man, I am on fire for Christ. I want you to come to know Christ. I want to talk about God. I want to talk about the Bible. And then in a couple of months or, or a year or two, and suddenly the fire is out. Those who did not become Christians see that. and They say, man, see, Christianity is such a joke. What a waste of your time. I'm glad I didn't follow you into that. Jesus calls us. If we're going to follow him, he is first. It's not part-time Christians. If we're going to be contagious Christians bringing tax collectors and sinners, then we need to make sure that they understand, we understand, we know Christ is first. He's going to give another example, verse 31. What king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him and comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation to ask for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. He's, he's calling the, all of these tax collectors. Go back to those first couple of parables that we just read. Who is he talking to? The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, the complete strangers. And Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, if you're going to follow after me, you've got to set everything else aside. You've got to completely give yourself over and realize that I am the one you follow. If we're contagious Christians, now, now browbeating other people about who they are and what they've done is not what Jesus does, does is it? What he's talking about is, I'm humble. Remember these parables we're looking at here in chapter 14. He starts off saying, life is paramount. Be humble. Invite everybody. And if people reject you, go find somebody else. And the tax collectors and the sinners hear this and they say, that's what I want. That is what I want. And he finishes this chapter in verse 34 and he says, salt is good. He's talking about us, disciples of Christ. He's talking about us as we follow Christ. He says, salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? What can you do to bring salt back, flavor back to salt? And the answer is, nothing. Can you imagine making a meal, making some food? Uh, this, this thing needs, needs some more salt. This thing needs some more salt. This thing needs, and you're just dumping salt in, dumping salt in, and it does nothing. And there's no change in the flavor. It, it's, it's literally staying the same soup, staying the same meat, staying the same. And you're just like, my fries, I've tried to pour salt on them. They're, they're coated white. This salt, useless, right? What am I going to do with it? Verse 35, Jesus tells us, It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. And then he finishes verse 35 and he says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Pay attention to this, Christians. Are you listening? Because he's talking about you and I. He's talking about us. And if we're not going to make the changes, if we're not going to become the Christians that he wants us to be, what use are we to God? If we want to be contagious Christians. We've got to be checking ourselves, checking our lives. Are we doing what we can, our part, to bring people to the kingdom of God? He's given us great and precious wisdom here. Are we paying attention? Man, I've gone over. <laughs>
hopefully your challenge today and hopefully you can think about your own life and what you can do, what the changes you can make in your life so that as you move into this world, as you start to interact with people again, you can show Christ and they can say, I want what Scott has. I want to know God. I want to know who this Jesus is that he follows. All right, Lord's Supper. I want to stay in Luke. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke in chapter 22, because I want to stay with this contagious Christianity idea. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 14, we read this. And when the hour came, he reclined a table and the, the apostles with him. And he said to them, listen to this. I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now Jesus is going to go to the cross. He's going to be arrested, beat, scourged, or whipped, abused. He's going to have people say all sorts of nasty, false things against him and about him. They're going to, they're going to do some terrible things to our Lord and Master. And he knows this. He's getting ready for this. And as he prepares for this, he says, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I want to do this, Jesus says. Now, this is Jesus. He says, Scott, I want to eat with you before I suffer. Verse, verse 16, he says, For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. As we partake of the Lord's Supper on a weekly basis, kingdom of God is here, it is among us. And Jesus, the, the part of communion is not just with you and I, but that is part of it. You go read 1 Corinthians. But it is also... Us and God, we commune with our God. There's a reason why it's called communion. And so as we partake of the Lord's Supper, Jesus desires to eat with us. Jesus sets up the situation where you and I, we feast not just with each other, but also with God Almighty. And so here this morning, we've gathered to eat this Passover meal, this Lord's Supper with each other. Jesus desired it. We should as well. Verse 19, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the bread. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, for his gift, his eternal life, given to us. He eagerly desired to eat that Passover meal to establish this covenant of fellowship, of relationship, and of eternal life. And he said, this bread is my body. Father, we remember the body of Christ, his gift. We partake of this bread in your son's precious name. Amen. Verse 20, and likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus, for his gift of eternal life. The covenant given through the blood of Jesus. Forgiveness of sins, eternal life, Father, we remember his gift by partaking of this fruit of the vine. It's in Jesus' name we pray to you. Amen. All right, contribution. 
If you're not a member of the church, we're not asking you to send money. If you are a member of the church, we would encourage you to send your contribution to the local church of Christ that the gospel may be preached, may be expanded where you live. The church may reach out and love those that are in your area. But if you are the Escoda Church of Christ, remember, we don't get physical mail. It's got to go to the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 222, Escoda, Michigan, 48750. Uh, or you can always drop it off at Mike's house if you so choose. Uh, but we are uh, instructed by Paul, 1 Corinthians, contribution, first day of the week. This work is to spread, to further the gospel here in Oscoda. For those of you that are out of, outside of Oscoda, we thank you for joining us. This is for us here in Oscoda. Let's pray for a contribution, shall we? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for our homes and for our jobs. Our hearts go out to those that are without jobs, and we ask that uh, provision might be made for them. For those that are without homes and without food, may we be the church that you've called us to be and help them in any way that we can. Father, we thank you for the things that you've blessed us with. We pray that our giving would be used to further your kingdom, your gospel. This is our prayer in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, we're going to, uh, as, as we finish here, uh, we're going to, you're welcome to join us. We're going to get sack lunches. We're going to go to the restaurant, get some takeout. We're going to go down to the beach, have a little bit of in-car fellowship at the beach. You're welcome to join us. If not, that's okay. And, and again, I'm looking forward to the 24th. If you're not comfortable coming to worship with us at the building, feel free to stay home. Uh, we've always, or not always, but we have before the pandemic broadcast my sermons online. We'll try to get the Lord's Supper in there as well, maybe. Talk with Bill and Mike about that. But uh, we'll be broadcasting this online uh, through Facebook. Uh, and so if you've joined us during all of this time, even as we go back to the building, we'll still be on Facebook. It'll probably start a little later, probably about 11.25 or so. But we'll still be online, and you're welcome to join us for that. Uh, I would encourage you to come for Bill's lesson at 10, where he's teaching us from the book of Galatians. Uh, we're This Wednesday... We'll still be online here, so this Wednesday we'll be in the book of Exodus. Ooh, tonight is Stump the Preacher Night, and so if you got questions, no one's given me any questions yet. If you got questions for tonight, I need those questions so that I can answer those questions. But normally on Potluck Sunday nights, uh, the congregation has the opportunity to ask questions about God, the scriptures, the Bible, and I'll do my best to answer them. So you're welcome to join us for that tonight. That'll be at 6 o'clock right here online on Facebook. You're welcome to join us. If you got questions, text them to me uh, or send me a message on Facebook or give me a phone call. Either way, 989-305-2721. I'm Scott Busich. I preach for the Escoda Church of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm humbled by your presence. I thank you so much. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. Uh, we so much love your son. Not only his going to the cross, not only his being our sacrifice, but his willingness to humble himself, to show us to be, how to be, the, the design that you had with Adam and Eve, Jesus fulfills. And we are challenged, we are, we are challenged to be humble, Father. May we have changed hearts today in our desire to follow Christ. May we be more like you and more like your son. May we become the Christians you call us to be, Father. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and give you all the praise in his precious name. Amen. If you're not a Christian and uh, you've been watching all of this, understand that Jesus, he calls all of us, the whole world, to, to salvation. And that's found in Jesus, his name only, and no other name is salvation found. 
Jesus calls you to believe on him, to confess him as Lord. He calls you to repent a lifestyle of sin, and he calls you to be baptized, to be immersed underwater, to be saved. If you've not done that, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord, give me a call, let me know, and I would be happy to teach you, to guide you in that, to, to show you the kingdom of God and how to receive eternal life. Uh, if you've never done that, give me a call, let me know. Christians, saints, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to close this out here with some music from uh, uh, In Search of the Lord's Way. I'll see you guys at the beach. God bless, okay? <laughs>